Recording with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. It's this little like gimbal with a built-in camera. It's sort of like you took the front part of a DJI drone and you put it on a creator handle with image stabilization. And I'm kind of in love with this, which is really strange because I'm usually a pretty big critic of these like small devices for capturing content. But the problem I have with most of them is that they use the phone in order to capture their content. And they're very heavy, uh, relatively speaking. And this thing is just like really light and really compact and it's got a lot of features it's got a microphone which i'm using right now and hope the audio is good let me know in the comments below it's a beautiful day out so i'm also going to capture some photos and some videos to see how the image quality is but so far what i've seen is really great and i can tell that it's really great because this has a built-in two inch screen that i'm looking at right now and that screen lets me see what's going on and if i want to i can even turn around the gimbal and keep recording while I'm going down the street. So unlike the phones where you have to sort of flip them around in order to go from shooting yourself to shooting the scenery, you can just tap this button over here and now it's an action camera. And then I tap the button again and now it's a vlogging camera. Let's go give this a try. One of the things that's always driven me a little bit crazy about gimbals is that they use the phone as a camera. And that means that the gimbal has to be really kind of top heavy because you have a phone that's heavier than the gimbal in most cases and it's really high up. So the gimbal motor has to be really strong and powerful to counteract the motion of the phone or it has to be not so strong and then the gimbal doesn't work very well. The other thing that's problematic about using the phone as the device is that you can't really see what you're recording if you want to use the better cameras. So if you're willing to use the front facing camera, you can see what you're doing with the gimbal. But if you want to use the better back facing cameras, you can't see yourself while you're recording you have to sort of trust that it's following you also when you're trusting if it's following you you don't really trust it and so what ends up happening is you have to turn it around to look at the back and review your footage the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 though there's a little two inch screen on here and I can look right down and see that it's working with a tiny screen I can't see exactly all the details that I would see with a phone but I can see enough to see that I'm in the frame I can also change settings and do other things while I'm recording and there's also a button that allows me to just flip it around from facing me to facing the other direction, and it keeps recording during this, which was really nice. There's a couple of really smart things about the design of the system. The DJI Osmo 3 by itself is this big, but I'm using it right now with the optional battery pack that comes with the creator kit, which makes the Osmo this big. A smaller handle for using it without the battery grip if you don't want it to be so long but you just want a little bit of better balance on here. It all uses USB-C and the battery grip will power the main battery when you have the battery grip plugged in with USB-C. Another really smart thing is that with the creator kit it's got this microphone here and the microphone both clips on but also there's a magnet that's used to clip the microphone on to your shirt if you don't have somewhere to clip on to. I do wish it had some noise canceling because you can probably hear that construction truck beeping in the background, but it's something I can take out post-process. Another really smart design idea is that there's a wide angle lens and the wide angle lens is magnetic. So I can just clip it on there and now I have a wide angle shot and now I have the standard shot. It is not a lot wider, but it is enough wider to be able to do handheld vlogging and get more of the background to focus. This is David in the future, jumping back in to say something that David in the past forgot, or at least something that I lost in the editing of a section I'm not using, which is that the camera's got a really great face detection. So I've turned on face detection and I'm just holding the camera and you can see it's tracking me as I move around, which is really great. There's also subject tracking. You can pick an object and track it as it moves through the frame. That's something that DJI brought to this from its drone software. There's one bummer though, one limitation. If I turn the camera around using the turn around button, whatever this is called, to show the other direction. When I come back from that, I rotate back towards me, face detection is no longer enabled. And so what I have to do, even though the icon shows that there's face detection on, I have to click the button, I have to exit from face detect, I have to tap me, go back in and do face detect again, and now face detect is enabled again. Now when you turn back around, it says that face detect is enabled. So if I turn this away again, and then I turn it back to me, the icon shows the face detect is enabled. But if I tap on me, it sees that it's my face. If I tap here, it's not actually tracking my face. That's something that might be able to be fixed in firmware. Okay, back to David from the past. One of the things I like about the Osmo 3 by itself and in the creator kit is that it comes with this little protection case. You put the gimbal in here, but the gimbal case also provides a place for the wide angle lens to go and for the magnet for the microphone to go, which is, I think, really nice and really smart. I wish there's a secondary thing you could snap onto this case because when I'm using the
looking at the bottom and I'm always worried that it's going to pop off. The 2 inch screen is really great and you can control all the settings on the 2 inch screen although it's a little overly sensitive and it's a little cramped so sometimes I will choose a setting other than the thing I'm trying to do because it's really hard to get it on that screen. However, it does have a mobile app and if we want to be a little meta with the mobile app here is me recording on the mobile app while I'm talking to you about the mobile app. And the mobile app lets you change all the settings and DJI is known for particularly good software for their drones. This is not exactly as full fleshed as the drone software but it doesn't really need to be. The cool video thing is it supports D-Log which means you can color grade the footage off of this the same way you can color grade the footage off of their drone which means you can match footage for things on the ground with this to combine it with things taken up in the air. There is no built-in storage you have to use that micro SD card slot. I wish there was a little bit of storage in here so if you forget the card in your card reader you could capture something anyhow it's a little bit of a bummer. Battery runs down a little bit quickly in the main body right now I've got 97% and I've been talking for probably about 30 minutes at this point. That though is because I have the battery grip on here and the battery grip is giving that much time. It does recharge really quickly. It will recharge to 80% in 16 minutes and it will record fully in about 30 minutes. I'd like to see the battery life a little bit longer, especially without the battery pack, but again, it seems to be good so far. I've recorded almost all of this video on a single charge. Connectivity is really great on this device. It's got both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which means that as soon as you've captured images and you've opened up the DJI app, the images and the videos get transferred over, which I think is really great because then I can edit them either in the DJI app, which does AI editing, or I can bring it into something like CapCut and go through my footage and take care of that. There are not a lot of drawbacks to this device. One, of course, is that you're shooting in the vertical mode. You're doing basically a crop of the sensor, but if you're shooting in vertical mode, you're most likely shooting for something like Instagram or TikTok anyhow, and so that crop isn't going to be a lot of a problem. Of course, if you want, you can just shoot in landscape, and then you can crop it later in your editor of choice. That gives you the flexibility to do... Hey, hey duckies. Hi. That gives you the flexibility to do both types of footage. I'm going to try and record some ducks. Hey, duckies. Hey, guys. Claim runtime is 166 minutes at room temperature before it overheats and stops functioning. I don't think I'm going to record for nearly three hours on this device, so it's not a big issue. The Pocket Osmo 3 can also be used as a webcam, which I'm doing right now with Zoom. I simply plug it in over USB-C, and the computer recognizes it as an attached camera, which is great because the built-in cameras on things like MacBook Pros are not very good. This is a lot better image quality. In fact, it's also better quality than most of the dedicated video cameras that people use for video conferencing, so you get a couple of things all at once with this. You can also record the footage like I'm doing now into the camera so that when you're done doing a conference or a Zoom or whatever you're doing, you have the original footage to work with. One thing you're definitely going to want to do is get a tripod that's tall enough to have this above your monitor. Right now I'm holding it in my hand because if I put it on the tripod, it would be like this, and this is a really not good way to do a video conference because jaw. Using this handheld for a live stream or a video conference is doable, although it's a little heavy, but the cool thing is you can see I'm tilting the gimbal almost 90 degrees, about 70 degrees before the thing starts to turn on me. And so if you were live streaming and you wanted to walk around, you have that benefit of gimbal. The resolution might actually be a little high for some video conferencing. I look a lot younger on the two inch screen than I'm looking at on the Pocket Osmo, and I look a lot older over here on Zoom, and maybe that's just Zoom is, makes people look older. I hope that's what it is. I feel like the price might be difficult for some people. At 570 bucks, it's definitely an investment, and it's an investment that you probably don't want to make if you're just doing casual vlogging. You can use your phone for that. Since it's about another $100 to get the Creator Kit, you really have to be invested in getting good video and good audio in order to make that splurge, but that's the point at which I feel that this becomes a really usable device. Let me know in the comments below if you think that the price is too high for you. If you're looking to buy a gimbal or use a gimbal, let me know in the comments below so I know if these kind of reviews are helpful for you. If you want to see more of my honest, you want to see more of my honest real world reviews, you can do that here. If you'd like to subscribe, and please do, you can do that here, or clicky click the link below. For Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. As always, Thanks so much for giving this a try.